Welcome. My name is Pam Benigno, and I'm the director of the Education Policy Center at the Independence Institute. Welcome to IITV. Today we're going to be talking about student-based budgeting, and our guest is Ben DeGroe, our senior education policy analyst, who really has become an expert on this subject. Hello, Ben. Thanks, Pam. Good to be with you. Nice to have you here. Ben just wrote a paper called Colorado Student-Based Budgeting on the Rise, and that's what we're going to talk about specifically today. Ben, we did just have an event. It was a very successful an event. We had many, many school districts, lots of CFOs there. Uh, so this must be a very important topic. Uh, can you give us the highlights of what is student-based budgeting? You would think that all budgeting when it comes to schools would be student-based. Why is this different? Student-based budgeting is one of those topics in education that's not one of the more sexy appealing ones, but when you get down to it, it's it's a it's a, a great and important one. So student-based budgeting essentially is this. We're going to attach the dollars that come from the state to the district headquarters. And when we send them to the school, they're attached based on the number of students who are there. And each student gets a certain amount of funding that goes with them. And those dollars can be used flexibly by the principal and the school community to make the decisions about how dollars are spent rather than just kind of raw formulas that come in the, in the form of personnel. So, for example, if you have 50 students, maybe you get two teachers in a grade. But if you have 51, all of a sudden you get three because that's the rule. In student-based budgeting, uh, the funds are attached one student at a time, and they can decide whether they want a smaller class size, an extra elective, more money in technology, and so there's more flexibility. Well, my guess is most parents think that that's the way that school districts are doing it now, but that's that's just not the case, is it? Um, why why is this important? Why would this new method that we're talking about these days uh, be important to improving student achievement? So besides the flexibility I talked about, and of course, the closer the decision is made to the student, the better it tends to be. So more of the when more of the budgets decided, at the school level closest to the teacher in the classroom and the student, we're going to spend those dollars ultimately more efficiently. And they're going to go to work to meet an individual student's needs uh, as, as instead of we're just going to make one size fits all rules to fit them. It also spends money more transparently. So you can see that the dollars going to each school are more fairly distributed and, and more clearly understood by the public who, who pays for the education. Well, charter schools are public schools, and isn't that what they already do because the money is going to the school? In essence, this is using the same budgeting concept that charter schools already use and saying we're going to extend this same concept to all kinds of public schools in a district. So when we had the event, you put together a panel, and there were several school districts that uh, presented that day. I know there are more districts than just that presented, but can you give us an idea of where this is happening happening in Colorado? Six districts that we know of in Colorado, but they tend to be the major districts, including the three largest districts. So they cover uh, well over a third of all the students and all the budgets in K-12 education in Colorado. And they include uh, the Pooter School District in Fort Collins was the very first. They started this about 2007. Shortly thereafter, Denver Public Schools, which is now by many measures the state's largest district. And then uh, Douglas County, which is the third largest district in the suburban uh, region just south of Denver, as well as what I think is uh, probably the most significant example of student-based budgeting down near Colorado Springs, District 49, sometimes called Falcon, uh, has a really, they put more than 80% of their total budgets into the hands of schools and principals to make decisions. Adams 12 has, has kind of picked it up in the last couple of years, and Jefferson County, the second largest district in the state, is just rolling out student-based budgeting this year, 2015-16. Can you just give us a few examples on how some of the districts do things differently? Sure. So there, there's lots of variations between these. Just like student-based budgeting is not one-size-fits-all at the school level, the districts show that it's not a one-size-fits-all from district to district. Uh, for example, in Poudre and Denver, um, the money is weighted for students. So if you're a student in poverty or an English language learner, the recognition there is that it's, it tends to be more challenging to teach. So there's 
a factor or a weight that goes along with that student. They may, they'll get more money than the typical student. And there's other factors that those districts use in their formulas, formulas as well. Um, and that's, I, I think, one of the major differences you see between uh, the school districts, as well as um, other ways that they allocate funds uh, that probably are too technical for this video, but I would recommend people read my new paper, Colorado Student-Based Budgeting on the Rise. Well, I have one last question for you because sometimes I get kind of confused. I hear the term backpack funding and everybody seems to support backpack funding and I would assume that means it's going to follow the child. Is that different than student-based budgeting? Student-based budgeting or student-based allocation uh, or student-based financial management is a newer one I've heard or backpack funding are all uh, extremely similar uh, terms for the same, I the same idea that we're going to determine how money gets to schools and how it's used based on actual students who come in the door rather than uh, formulas that come from the top down. So it's really about bringing it, the money down to the school level and giving the principal the autonomy to make decisions that work best for his school rather than the district saying this is what you're going to do. And recognize that those funds are portable and follow the student to the place where they need to be served and that the dollars can best be used to serve their individual needs. And on top of that, I understand there's more, as you mentioned, transparency, where people can actually look and see how the money is being used at the school level. That's right. In the state of Colorado, based on legislation, by the year 2017, it's supposed to have, for every district across the state, not just these student-based budgeting districts, there will be a website that's going to show school level by school level. People are going to be able to compare how dollars go in and out and how they're used at the school level. So stay tuned for that as well. That, that sounds like that'll be interesting to see in 2017. Well, Ben, thank you so much today. And for IITV, this is Pam Benigno. Thank you.